Hi, I'm Steve Sapato, and you're listening to Speaker Talks podcast for speakers, authors, other podcasters, entrepreneurs, and leaders who want to learn how to be great presenters and authors who want to learn how to market their books. Today, I have the great privilege of talking with someone down under, and her name is Leanne Isaacson. And Leanne, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you, Steve. How are you? Yep. I'm excellent. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's uh, in the evening over there and it's early morning here. But Leanne talks about LinkedIn for speakers as well as a bunch of other things. We've been talking a little bit before the whole thing. Sorry, we can talk about all kinds of things, but we're going to try and keep it focused on LinkedIn for speakers and other people who want to learn how to use LinkedIn. Right, Leanne? Absolutely. So tell me your background. How did you get here? Oh, gee, I, I've got a I don't very... want to know about you as a baby. I don't want to know. No, no, I won't go back that far. Um, I have been a farmer pretty much all of my life, and I'm not really quite sure how I became a technology geek, but um, I went online back in 1997, and it, I think I was the first person in our entire rural South Australian region that had um, a two-way internet, a two-way satellite for internet. So, you know, it was back in the day when... Uh, internet was very very slow and you know you sort of look at now at what we um what did, we have and did you get it, those uh those funny beeps and boops when you uh logged in or that was a oh, modem thing was that a modem thing absolutely and <laughs> and it was back in the day where um i'm not quite sure how familiar you are with farming but if one of the electric fences in because everything went through our copper wire um, telephone system and if one of our um, electric fence has got a short in it which means that it interrupts the power supply um, then it would affect our phone lines because it the phone oh, and so I effectively if if we'd had a you know rain or something and our neighbor's electric fence had a short in it I used to have to get my husband to go over and turn the electric fence off so I could turn in, uh, so I could send an email <laughs> so, um, that's, yeah, a couple, it was, that's a couple you know what, that's a couple of technologies ago because it really wasn't that long, maybe 30 years, maybe 25, whatever that's been. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not that long ago, especially if there's young, younger people watching, you know, for those of us uh, like I, uh, I use my mom, my grandmother, grandfather's crank phone from when I was a child, you know, and yeah. people go crank phone. You go, don't even get into that. But, yeah, isn't that fascinating how the technology has so dramatically changed? Absolutely. And um, I think. What I, what I really discovered, I was teaching people, I, I had a job with a, a government department back in 2000, teaching people how to use the internet. Um, and it was before, it was before Google and it was, bef you know, like I think Netscape was the browser and Eudora was the mail client. And oh, so, you know, yeah. it seemed like eons ago, but uh, so that was back in 2000. And it sort of got me really probably um, in increasingly interested in how we could bridge the geographic divide um, because and especially with like I've been involved in adult education for a long time as well so it was really about how we could actually use this technology to bring learning to wherever we were regarding a, regardless of you know the geography so yeah I did a lot of stuff um, I got a was lucky enough to get a scholarship in 2004 which you know, I think probably I look back now and think it was a thirty thousand dollars scholarship, and wow. it was really yeah, back in two thousand and four, um, and it really allowed me to almost experiment with technology. And part of this scholarship was a um, a trip. I, I did some work over in Wales, so I oh, came Wales. over. Wales, that's a long yeah. now. When you know, for everybody listening, Wales is not part of Australia. Wales is uh, where. Wales is in the um, part of the United Kingdom. Yeah. yeah. Over, part of Great yeah. Britain. So that was yep, a nice Great. trip for you. That was cool. So it was. It was fabulous. And um, and so what I did was back then I really wanted to get people using technology for fun. So then the technology would become irrelevant and it was the actual learning that was that was more the, um, the focus. And so... I, I, I facilitated wine appreciation via video conference and we did floristry via video conference. Oh, wow. So, you know, so all sorts of things. And really, I think my, you know, like my motto at the time was, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, like it just doesn't work. <laughs> 
Um, and as long as you know, as, as long as no one was going to um, to get killed or or it, or you know badly injured, but. Um, so yeah, like I, I've, I've been involved in technology for a long time, but I've also always been a connector. And so that, so sort of with, you know, in 2004, I sort of started to learn about, you know, like there was Twitter at the time was just sort of, you know, like coming into being. And so that a lot of the um, technology and social media things. So you that became that- kind of a connector at that point in time. But what led you now? What led you to become a LinkedIn expert? Uh, most of us, think, most of us think LinkedIn. Eh, you know, it's not nearly as friendly as Facebook. It doesn't have nearly as much fun as Twitter. Uh, it doesn't have the images and pictures of Instagram. You know, it's for business, and and I don't really, you know, most people, I don't really get LinkedIn because people there aren't really connecting. They're they're like advertising, right? Yeah, look, it's it's interesting. You know, like I think I joined LinkedIn in 2007 and I think back then there was about 18 million members and so it was sort of one of those things and I've always well and truly been a like a, an early adopter but also I've learned by doing. So, you know, if someone sort of said something, I think, oh, I wonder how that works. So curiosity has also been, you know, is very, very much a part of me. So, yeah, I joined LinkedIn in 2007 and sort of did a little bit with it, but not a great deal. And like back then, you know, you had to say how you knew someone and you sort of used to take the chance that you'd say that they were a friend and hope that, you know, they didn't turn around and say, Oh, yeah, I got blocked all the time. I got blocked all the time back in those days. They were like, well, you you know, enough people said that's not my friend that they went, hey, mm-hmm. you're not, you're breaking the rules, you're out. And so then it'd be like two months, I think, you know, and then you had to ask. You had to that's ask, right. hey, can I get back in? And You got put like, in LinkedIn jail. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand this. I'm trying to make these connections. And they're all saying, not unless you know them. Well, I said, if I knew them, I wouldn't have to make the connection, right? Exactly. So, um, so yeah, so... Like I said, connecting is always, I think it's just part of my DNA, you know, like, so I've always, you know, been thinking now, who do I know that could either help someone or who I could help or a resource or a place or so. Well, you I'm, know, I'm going to pick your brain there because I, I would love to have that, except I don't remember most, you know, I'll, I'll meet somebody and I'll go, you know, like even on this, you know, it's like, wow, that that'd be a great person to connect with other people. And then, you know, two months later, I'm like, oh, who was that? Do you have a, do you have a way to keep track of who was what? Do you have a, uh, um, what are the CRMs that says, hey, this is, this is people who do this? I look, I do probably what I do with, um, with LinkedIn is, is I do some pretty strategic searches. Like, so I know we, I talked at some point in time about, you know, like being memorable. And um, I think that that's sort of one thing that, I have always embraced and you know when when someone talks about being memorable you sort of think you know they've done something out um you know crazy or something but it's really just doing little things to actually set you apart from other people and go ahead so so if I'm on LinkedIn how do you know as especially as a speaker you know if uh, I always say when I go to networking things when we were not in lockdown so um, yep. When you went to networking things, people were either authors or speakers or coaches, right? Uh, unless they sold insurance or were bankers. And I mean, you know, yep. that's the kind of people that you met all the time. It's like, wow. And so how do you stand out? How do you make yourself memorable on LinkedIn? What do you have to do? I think, you know, there's a few things. So I'll just, I'll duck back just a little bit. So I, I yeah, so I joined in 2007 and it was probably in sort of around 2012 that I started to learn a bit more about LinkedIn and and I made a conscious decision that I would connect with anyone that wanted to connect with me. So I, my attitude, you know, no matter whether it's online or, you know, in face to face or, or wherever, you know, like I never discount a connection. So, you know, you don't, I don't walk into a networking event or or somewhere and not shake hands with someone until I know who they are and what they do. Like, you know, you go in and you shake hands and and you start a conversation. So for me, connecting with someone on LinkedIn is basically, you know, a virtual handshake. 
And so sort of in 2013, 14, I started to really build my network um, and actively connect with a lot of people. And sort of back then it was a little bit easier. There was a few sort of ways that you could put your, you know, your profile out that, you know, to say that you were open to networking and connecting with people. So I really grew my network pretty, oh, I think probably by seven and a half, eight, seven and a half thousand connections for two or three years, sort of around 2013, 14. So by about 2015, I had around 25,000 connections. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, and currently, currently I have 30,000 connections. So, wow. Um, which, you know, it, it, it's one of those things, it's, so, you know, now you can actually buy connections, you can buy followers, you you're like, so you, you know, you can do that now. Whereas back then, you, you know, you, so I've literally hit accept or connect 30,000 times. <laughs> think, just thinking about that, you go, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we do it without, I mean, you spend 20 minutes on LinkedIn, and if you yeah. connect with those people, there's 10 people. So 10 people a day, let's say. And that's if you only get on one time for 20 minutes. So 10 people a day, you don't think of it building yeah. up to 30,000. That's right. I think I sat down and worked out over the length of time that I've been on LinkedIn. Um, it, it averages, I think, seven connections a day over 13 years. So, you know, it's, it, it, it is a lot. Um, but what I... What really that's actually allowed me to do is have friends of friends, which, you know, a second level, um, a second level network of oh, around three or four million people across the world. Yeah. Well, and they say that the second level is where you find your clients. Uh, I'm not sure why, you know, but for some reason, the first connections, we say hi to people. I talk to maybe 10% of the people who reach out to me uh, and I said, I say, reach out to me. What, you know, they click the button that says, Hey, I want to friend you. And yep. then you look at what they have to offer or what they do. And, and uh, uh, you say, yep, I can accept them. Yeah. And then when you like, I'll write to them. And my big thing is, Hey, how can I help you be more successful uh, the rest of this year or into next year? And 99% of them don't even respond. You know, you're right. like, well, why did you try and friend me out if it wasn't, you know, and then of course the next thing you get from some people is the first thing when you accept their friendship is an ad. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I'll quit it. You know, I had somebody yeah. telling, they said, Hey, I can, you know, and they put out a, a thing that was how much they charge. I go, I don't, why would I care how much you charge for your service until I know you, what is it? No, no like, and trust. Isn't that the three yeah. things? That's so, right. That's the one. Yeah, so. Well, I think that um, over the years, so so that's really, so that was my philosophy. You know, I never discounted a connection because you just, you just never know. Like over the time, you know, the amount of people I've heard say, oh, you don't connect with anyone you don't know and you only connect with people in, you know, your industry. You're like, you know, and, and people quite often have such a, a narrow focus when it comes to actually making connections and building their network and and I suppose like one of the things that I always found is well and I was always a little bit um, apprehensive about telling too many people the size of my network because I you know even today like I could effectively have 30,000 people messaging me every day yeah and and so I sort of you know like oh how am I going to manage that if, if you know, I <laughs> what start if what if ten percent of them did yeah <laughs> exactly um, so I sort of kept fairly quiet really and um, but what I tended to tend to use my network for is connecting people with people so for example I had a friend and. And for a long time, I, you know, I wasn't specifically targeted at any particular group or, you know, like I said, I, I have, I suspect connections in just about every industry um, on LinkedIn. And I went, I sort of sat down one day and started to work out um, how many, can, you know, what connections and have connections in, in just about every country of the world. And so it, it really, what that does allow me to do is, is, you know, again, you know, we talk about the second level connections, you know, friends of friends. And 
I have, I, I'll just give you a couple of examples. I have a, um, a friend of mine in Colorado who was, he'd created a cartoon and like a, an animation, cartoon animation. And he said to me one day, he said, oh, he said, I need you to do me a favour. Can you, he, the BBC were looking up, looking at picking up this animation to run as one of their programs over in the, um, over in the UK. And he said, can you find me, so he's in Colorado, and he said, can you find me a lawyer specialising in media and entertainment law in the UK? I went, yeah, okay, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. So, you know, I did some really strategic searches and really narrowed it down and, and looked, you know, I sort of came to about, you know, 10 profiles and, and looked at each of the profiles and there was one particular lady I thought, yeah, I think that I think she's probably the one. And so she was a second level connection. And so what I did was I sent her a connection request just saying, you know, this probably seems a bit random, but I have a client, you know, this is what he requires. Is it something that you'd be interested in being connected with? So effectively um, I'm the, the LinkedIn matchmaker. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool, though. And and so when we talk about what makes you memorable, obviously your connections. But how about a speaker? What would a speaker do to make themselves memorable? So I think you know a lot of speakers tend to be a little bit, probably a little bit shy on LinkedIn. You know, like a lot of speakers don't understand, you know, what parts of your profile and and you know like being able to actually upload media. So one of um, one of uh, a, another example, and and it's 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 relating. I'm not doing a, a round of the circle like I quite often do. Um, I was asked to speak at a um, a conference here in in South Australia, and and purely they found my profile through LinkedIn. So you know, I started talking to the the person that was running the conference, and just in conversation, um, he said, "Oh, he was looking for a." Um, a lawyer to talk about the the legal aspects of social media, and um, I said, "Oh, I said, look, I can probably find one. Oh, I can find one on LinkedIn." So again, I did some, you know, searches, and and this particular speaker had some of his actual speak, you know, like his show reel, like you know, oh yeah, speakers, sizzle reel, yep, attached to his profile, and probably, but you know, he he wasn't quite so. Um, sophisticated to call them show reels but but what I did you know I like was like I had a look at that and I thought yeah you know so effectively that put him ahead you know there might have been someone else that was just as good or you know better but because I was able to actually see him in action um, I was able to make the so it, again you know he wasn't a first level connection he was a second level connection of mine so I just made the um, the connection. So I think, you know, like it's about making sure that you've got like a really good headline and a good um, a good uh, profile photo and also having like the cover image uh, um, on your profile. But then it's about actually how you engage with people. So, you know, engaging in other people's content and, and creating conversations and, yeah, you know, that's, like that. that's one of the things that I'm uh, I'm, I'm a nutball on, which is uh, LinkedIn puts out these things that I think they need to remove, which is, uh, 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 you know, your anniversary uh, for your workplace or your birthday or whatever it is. And these people click the button. Hey, it's Steve's. Now, again, I've got I've only got six thousand people, but yeah. they'll get notification. Hey, it's Steve Zapato's birthday or his work anniversary. And they click that stupid button. Please tell him, hey, happy, <laughs> you know, congratulations on your anniversary. And they click that button. And, you know, you'll get three or four hundred. Hey, congratulations on your anniversary. And I'm like, shut up. Right. <laughs> if you're not smart enough to put my name, just put my name in there. So how much effort does it? Hey, hi, Steve. Boom. There's the there's the add in. But these people just and time after time. And I, so I'm both on Facebook and on LinkedIn. I'm a nutball for saying don't like anybody's stuff. Don't click those buttons. Instead, put in a real comment share if you want to share their content yeah. but likes and congratulations are ignored completely you know and, and i started going at one point in time i got so many of those that i started putting 
uh, ads out. So I, I would copy and paste an ad. And then every time somebody said, congratulations on your work anniversary, and they didn't include their name or my name, I just responded with an ad. Boom, there you go. So glad you reconnected with me. You know, leave me alone. But it's, it's crazy that people, they want to think they reached out, but they did absolutely nothing in terms mm. of making a connection, right? It's actually interesting because you can turn, you can turn those notifications off um, in your privacy and settings. You can, you can turn off. That yeah, you know, but there's like, a few people I like to hear from. So when they when they blip across, I've forgotten them because I haven't talked to them in two or three yeah. months. And then I go, oh, yeah, that's Bob or, you know, that's Karen. Yeah, that's right. I, I need to say, hey, how you doing and how are the kids? You know, because people absolutely. do slip away from you. So I leave them on even though they irritate me just because I go, yeah. you people need to understand the purpose of that is not to throw that out as a throwaway line. It's meant to reconnect you with that person. Um, and you know it's interesting. I, um, I I have quite often um, some healthy debates with some of my um, other LinkedIn um, colleagues that you know like train LinkedIn. And you know it's interesting when you talk about uh, a, like a like and a comment. You know a like, comment, and a share. And one of the things that um, I quite often um, talk about is you know like on un unlike facebook and instagram you know like the actual like a like is is pretty much just a vanity metric you know like it really it really doesn't particularly do anything That's whereas, right. whereas on linkedin you know if you like a post or if you um like something what that does is it brings that person or that that comment or that um piece of content into your network um and i'm not quite sure whether you've looked at your news feed but quite often you'll see in your news feed that, you know, so, you know I, it might appear in mine that, that, you know, Steve has liked this particular post. And so the post will actually appear in my news feed potentially, right. potentially from a second level connection. So what that's done is that's actually brought you into their network, but also them into your network as far as, you know, just an awareness that that person even exists. So it's like a tweet, like a tweet then. So if I yeah. like somebody's tweet, it will say, Steve, like this tweet. Correct. And so I suppose, you know, again, you know, like as far as content um, and and engagement, certainly commenting is, is certainly, you know, king when it comes to engagement um, as far as on, you know, articles and, um, and posts. But not all, you know, like not everyone is actually game to put a comment onto someone's post that they don't know. And and I think that that's one of the things that, you know, sometimes you're like just a, you know, just a like is, is something just enough to go, okay, well, you know, I'm here and I'm active because I think one of the things that we also often forget, you know, there's six, I think 682 million people on LinkedIn. Jeez. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, so there's a lot of profiles, but there's not that actual, look, and I can't remember just off the top of my head what the statistics are as far as, you know, like the actual active number of people, you know, that, that check their profile every day or, uh, but, you I know, like. It. When you said that, I, I, you know, I've sent out stuff, uh, you know, I do uh, speaker talks which is getting speakers on a stage in front of an audience, right? So they can get that sizzle reel that's really important to yeah. them getting jobs. And I got one back. I was talking to my wife uh, last night. I got the other one back uh, from, and I'm trying to think whether it was January, I'll say January, right? Mm. Seven, eight, nine months ago, whatever it might've been, where somebody said, hey, I just checked this. Do you still have availability? <laughs> and you're like, well, my next event's in March, but you know, they hadn't obviously looked at this in like seven or eight, nine months, you know, that's, yes. yeah. So, you know, there certainly are a lot of people on LinkedIn that, um, that aren't active. And so I suppose, you know, like I look at it a couple of ways, you know, when you talk about um, people that, you know, like just hit the standard, you know, happy birthday, you know, there's a couple of things that trigger in me. Well, you know, that they're actually active um, and they're, they're making a conscious decision to click something because you know like you can't 
to my knowledge, you can't automate that. You know, there's lots of, um, yeah. you know, there's, there's lots seem of like you can. And I don't think you can. So I suppose, you know, like there's an element of me that thinks, well, at least, you know, that that person's active and alive That's and prepared and prepared to to take some sort of action, whether it be, you know, the easy way of just hitting the button, but um, at least, at yeah. least they're yeah. there. They're out there. So let me ask you a question. Um, when we talked about you being one of the LinkedIn experts, what are some of the best pieces of advice you can offer to the people? And and first of all, let's get back to how do they contact you? Somebody says, man, I need to ask her a couple of questions. How do they contact you right now? So you can con so contact me on LinkedIn. So send me a personal connection request. Um, okay. Is it Leanne Isaacson? Yes, it is. Leanne Isaacson. Mm -hmm. And Now, you didn't put your last name in there, so do me a favor. If you can still type that in, type in your last name so they know how to spell it. Oh, right? yeah. Because that's really important. Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -E, Isaacson, I-S-A-A-C-S-O-N. <laughs> And so it's Leanne Isaacson, L-E-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. For those who are just going to be listening to the podcast, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Isaacson, I-S-A-A-C-S-O-N. So you can find you on LinkedIn. Okay, Absolutely. where else? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can also find my website, uh, leanneisaacson.com.au. Now, that's important. Wait, don't rush through that. <laughs> leanneisaacson.com.au meaning yeah. you have to connect with her in Australia. And look how easy it is to connect um, now, you know, on uh, uh, podcasts, on video. So don't be afraid of other countries. If somebody's in another country who has something to share and help you build and grow your business, now might be the time to reach out. So leanneisaacson.com, was it dot .au? Dot .au, I do have .com as well, which is forwarded to the dot .au. So um, it's either .com or dot .com. A bit. .com .au. <laughs> um, and also on Twitter, so um, Leanne Isaacson on Twitter, um, Instagram, but but yeah, generally probably Twitter and uh, LinkedIn would be the um, the easiest ways okay. to contact me. All right, so let's then get back to what real specific advice do you have for people on who you're using LinkedIn? How do they get more visible? How do they get more business? How can they draw people to them? What's the secret to LinkedIn? Um, so I think it's ha making sure that your profile is actually, um, it's especially the about section, that it's written speaking to your ideal client, your ideal customer, but also, but also written in the first person. So it's actually you speaking. You know, like quite a lot of profiles you see, you know, it might be written that Leanne Isaacson does such and such and she did this. Whereas it's actually better to write it in the first person, so I'm physically, you know, it's as if I'm speaking to to who's reading it. Um, so have a really good headline, have a really good profile photo, um, especially for speakers having as much actual rich media on their profile as what they can. So um, either pod, you know, linking to podcast interviews or actually having them, you know, some video of them actually speaking um, to do some like you know as many LinkedIn videos on LinkedIn as they possibly can so it's really about especially when speaking is your craft it's about having people get to know you um and and not necessarily like I'm very probably person personal on LinkedIn you know like I'm quite often known to send someone a connection request um offering I have a very wicked sense of humour as well, and I'm always smiling. So where it, whatever I do, I always put a smiley face. And um, but you know, I quite often have, you know, in my um, connection request, say, you know, I was going to offer to send you a bottle of Australian snake oil to solve every speaking problem that you have. But it's winter, and I couldn't find any snakes that were prepared to donate their oil. So you know, so. <laughs> That's good. You know, I, I have to admit, um, I, I, I'm not usually that creative. I'm just like you suck a wicked sense of humor. Uh, I have a very sarcastic sense of humor. And sometimes I respond or write to people. And what I think is funny, they're like, what, what the hell's wrong with you? And I go, oh, maybe I overstepped just a touch there. Yeah. So look, and I think it's probably, um, 
just 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 having the awareness and the you know like the ability to to try and get a bit of an understanding of of the person that you're wanting to connect to so always sending a personal connection request and just a couple of tips on LinkedIn there's really only two places on LinkedIn that you can guarantee that you can add um, a note to your connection request. So that's actually looking at someone's, going to someone's profile and click, clicking connect, especially on the, um, you know, like on the desktop version of LinkedIn. So going, so, you know, quite often you might sort of see that, you know, it, it it's people you might know or, you know, because there's the connect yeah. button all over the place. Yeah. And now we got about three or four minutes to wrap this up, but what you're saying then is when I go to connect, I should write them a note. Now, should it be an ad? I mean, should it be a note of, hey, I do this, I do this? No, no? No, no. Um, look, it's it's really, it's really you know, like say going to their profile and having a bit of a look at who they are and what they do and having a look at their activity. Um, you know, you can go to someone's activity and just have a bit of a look at what they post and, so just to get a bit of a gauge as to and give them a reason as to why they would want to connect with you. Um, and like I said, you know, I quite often, you know, will make it fairly personal. Um, and, you know, I might say, you know, this is and, and not necessarily always really funny, but, um, you know, I might say, you know, like I've come across your profile through the wonderful LinkedIn spider web that mutual connections bring us and, you know, love to connect and see how we might cross paths down the, the track. But the amount of people that don't send a personal message. Oh, huge. It's huge. Um, and so if you do, if you do it every time, it stands out. And, you know, like and most people will accept a connection request that has a message. Well, an example might be, and, and you got to think, what would attract you? So let's say, for example, somebody wrote to me and said, Hey, Steve, I see that we aren't connected, right? That's why I'm writing to you. But I see that you're a speaker. What are your top three topics that you speak on? Or where are you going to be speaking next? Is it possible for me to yeah. come see? I mean, if you ask those questions, whether yeah. I'm speaking recently or not, I will probably respond. But if you say, yeah. hey, I'm, uh, you know, like if I'm writing to Leanne, I'll go, you know what? I'm a professional speaker and I saw your profile and... Uh, uh, I see that you connect people and I think it's really important because as a speaker, I need to connect more people and I think we have some. No, no, make it personal. Make it say, hey, yeah. I see that you connect people. How can you work with me or what can you offer me? And ask them the question, what can you offer me, right? Because yeah. a lot of times that's what we, when we talk about networking, uh, when you go networking, most people want to say, hey, I've been in business for 40 years. This is my company. This is my organization. This is why it's good. This is why this. And you're like, nobody cares about your organization. They want to know what can you do for them or their connections. So That's if I right. say, hey, I'm Steve Sapato, I'm a professional speaker, and um, I see that you're an insurance agent. Is is there anything that I can do to connect you with another client? Mm -hmm. Right? People yeah. go, oh, maybe. At least they might respond. You know, again, as uh, Leanne and I are talking, the response level on LinkedIn is fairly low. Yeah, um, and I so I think that that you know really is one of the keys. Um, so doing it on someone's profile, you know, you can add a note if you go to their profile and hit connect. Um, but also using your mobile, the mobile app. Um, so if you you know find someone's profile on on their mo on your mobile um app then if you click there's three buttons um on their on their profile page and it can it'll drop down a little menu that you can then personalize the message so if you hit just connect straight away it'll just fire off um an invitation with nothing so but if you click on um the three little dots which is more and it'll drop down a list and you can um click on personalize invitation so that would be, you know, one really important thing. Um, and to just engage with people, just, you know, and always be curious, always be curious. And In think, other words, no, always I'm ask not. them, always. That's one of the critical things about any commentary, any connection you want to make. If I ask you, you're probably going to respond. If I yeah. tell you, you're going to be bored. 
Uh, so right. one of my mottos is stop boring speakers. And that's uh, where I make yeah. a living. It's going into corporations, companies, organizations, and teaching their people how to run meetings that are not boring, how to run lectures that are not boring. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I think, you know, like. Okay, um, one, we're into the last minute. So how do they connect with you again, Leanne? So connect with me on LinkedIn. So Leanne Isaacson. Um, and I'm in Australia. I think there's there's two other Leanne Isaacsons in the world. One's in Alaska and the other's in New Zealand. So there's only three of us. Um, so I'm in Australia. Um, so on LinkedIn or um, you can connect, um, follow me on Twitter and send me a direct message on Twitter and or on my website, leanneisaacson.com or .com.au. .com.au. <laughs> I have to yeah. I have to talk with my mouth like this in order to get anything. You just talk normal. I don't understand that. I feel I forget that I've got an accent. <laughs> well, I got the accent down there. You have the accent up here. Yeah. Anyway, it was a pleasure uh, sharing with Leanne today. And Leanne, if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. And certainly, um, we want you folks to connect with Leanne. Find out. You know what? It doesn't cost any money to ask a question. So if you no have way. a question, if you have something that you you say, man, I don't get LinkedIn about this, drop her a note. Whether she can help you or not, she'll connect you with people who can. And that's why you're trying to do business, isn't it? To be connected to the right people. Leanne, uh, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to drop you off the screen and uh, uh, I'll be back with you in just a second. OK, fabulous. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. My pleasure. Okay, I'm Steve Sapato, and you have been listening to or watching Speaker Talks, the podcast for speakers, authors, entrepreneurs, leaders, and uh, I forget, what did I say other podcasters? <laughs> I hope you learned some today. If you just still need to learn, remember, it's Leanne Isaacson. Connect with her, and let's get you rolling along. God bless. Mm -hmm.